This video is supported by EmuDB, the lightweight, high-speed immutable database for systems and applications. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And as you know, end of the year, uh, with the time between Thanksgiving and New Year, traditionally is mainframers special quality time with their with their favorite topic with the mainframes. Certainly I uh, tend to do a lot more mainframes related uh, stuff during uh, this time of the year between Thanksgiving and uh, a new year especially in the time uh, between Christmas and New Year because uh, there's just more time around it's uh, it's a time where people uh, like to uh, be at home uh, maybe with their families with a nice cup of tea or coffee and uh, and commit some time to their favorite uh, uh, projects I always pick up one or two sometimes three projects during this time and uh, and try to get them to work. Last year's project, as you may know from this channel, was to create, uh, to recreate the BitNet network for NGE, uh, network job entry for mainframes and VAX machines and all kinds of other computers and, uh, and uh, connect all these mainframes, all these uh, machines together in the, uh, in the in the familiar bitnet network so that uh, all these machines could talk together and uh, i think to a large extent we've been successful with that we have i think about 100 mainframes connected this way a lot of them are vm370 some of them are vax machines some of them are real mainframes like my um, real ibm mainframe and other real mainframes such as the one at the university of leipzig mvs 3.8 has made great progress with connecting to nge thanks to uh, the genial programmer Bob Palmenter. And so uh, this was just an example of one of my projects from last year. Then I wrote a chat server for people who connect to um, to the uh, HNET and GE network. You also be made familiar that then later on I wrote this uh, uh, web interface to the NG network so people can access all the same services through this web interface. And as you see, we have lots of people connecting from all the mainframes as well as, well as from the web. So, as I said, uh, end of year is a uh, is the time for mainframes to do stuff with the mainframes. Now, uh, just 12 hours ago, as you can see here, uh, Fish, who is the maintainer of this special version of Hercules uh, called SDL Hercules 390 slash Hyperion on GitHub, he released uh, the new version called Release 4.3. And I thought that in this video we'll look a little bit what's possible with 4.3 and why, to some extent, it's a big deal for people who use Hercules for their mainframe needs. And so I thought that we'll look into that right now. Before I get, however, into that, I just want to say that I myself don't use Hercules or Hyperion that much anymore. I only use it for MVS and VM370. As you know, I, uh, I purchased uh, from IBM a ZPDT mainframe uh, last year, so I used that a lot for all my mainframe needs um, because it, uh, I, I obtained from IBM legally uh, ZVM and uh, ZOS, and so I do all my mainframe work on that machine, especially all the development work. And then I also um, obtained this year an IBM mainframe with, with where I run Linux and uh, and do a lot of my mainframe work there. So I don't really need Hercules that much anymore, except as I said, for MVS and for VM370. However, the release um, that we have obtained today from Fish, this genial person here, that's Fish, um, is important for the HNet BitNet network because it has some important additions and improvements that are going to be important. Also, um, by the way, because of MVS um, 3.8 TK4 update 9 kind of depends on the release of the software so that Jurgen Winkleman can go and then release his update 9 and he was waiting for a Hyperion version that had some bug fixes that needed that he needed to be fixed and I don't know if release 4.3 fixes all the bugs that Jurgen needed I'm not sure but it's possible and so um, even though in an email um, to a mailing list Jurgen mentioned a couple of weeks ago or maybe well, maybe last week today is um, 
I think 27th of uh, of November. So he mentioned lately that he doesn't expect to release anything uh, in 2020. It will be 2021 for a whole number of reasons. But anyway, so uh, it is important for um, the new release uh, is important because it fixes bugs that Jurgen needs to be needs to have fixed so that he can release update nine of his beloved MVS 3.8 TK4. And there are some other things that I need and a lot of other things that maybe other people need. So let's look at what's new in this version and then we go and build and I'll show you how to build uh, the latest release of um, Hyperion Hercules in, in case that's what you want to do. So um, as you can see, we have here a long list of <coughs> fixes and changes. So Ulong, Pointer, TypeDef, so that's uh, something that uh, Red Hat Linux needs, apparently. I don't know this issue, but uh, I'm not familiar with it. Then add missing 3203 printer in the, day, in the device uh, equate table. Uh, that's um, something that I vaguely remember. Fixed driver code in compatibility with her other Hercules. Mm, okay. Because as you know, there's many other Hercules around. The most two famous ones other than this one, this repository, is Pinhawk, which is maintained by Roger Bowler, one of the original founder of Hercules. He has his own version, and then there's the version that's uh, delivered as part of MVS 3.8 TK4 Update 8, which is a mix of of, um, of, spin, of Spinhawk and, and other versions that Jürgen Winkelmann built for himself. So those are the three main versions that I know. But anyway, so here apparently uh, Fish made possible to um, to uh, probably have drivers and uh, configuration files be co compatible with the other Herculeses. Threat names are incorrectly set, seems a minor issue. Fix missing timestamp in daemon mode, add date stamp option. Okay. All right, so fix console port to honor new updated setting. I think that's actually a bug that I may have opened, let's see. Yes, this came from me. Uh, there was a problem if, because, as you know, in Hercules, if it's running, you can actually, during runtime, you're supposed to be able to change the console port to something else, which I needed to do because I was switching from one VM version to the next, and I did, and I wanted the newer one to respond to the old console port. But then I found out that uh, that it didn't work, and so apparently Fish fixed that. Uh, that's very nice. Thank you. Uh, watchdog monitoring, yep, that's kind of important. That's a feature that enables Hercules to f to check if a CPU is hung um, and the operating system inside Hercules is not detecting that. Uh, so then you can uh, start recovery. Uh, Panopt option, so you now you can have, um, well, we're going to try this out, Panopt. So we'll, you can have uh, coloring and dark light inside the Hercules console. Uh, fix hang deadlock in device attention function. This sounds familiar. Um, yeah, this was related to MVS 3.8. I remember that one. Then improved CTCE uh, channel to channel adapter uh, driver functionality. This is very important because it's important for VTAM. It's important for a bunch of other things. And um, Peter Jensen is the original author of this code, uh, the channel-to-channel -channel adapter, which I use, by the way, to connect also two of my OS. Um, as you remember, I had obtained two computers with the P390 cards, so I could legally run VMESA on those cards. And then I connected those by using uh, the channel-to-channel -channel adapter together also with a, with a, a normal uh, VM370 and that worked over the CTCE implementation but it was there were some issues on Hercules because it wasn't there was an error, error recovery and some other issues and it looks like uh, it was fixed in the meantime that's great news now this one is a big one TCP NGE support so in the past whenever people wanted to get their VM370s or VM oh sorry uh, MVS 3.8 or other operating system to connect to the uh, worldwide NGE network, which you can see by the way here, uh, moshix.dainu.net. You will see here all the 
mainframes and by the way I've in the last uh, five six days I've completely reconfigured the uh, the network I one of my nodes which was kind of important was a central node has not been to commission because I was paying too much in in uh, Google Cloud fees and so I removed a node that was kind of expensive um, but everything still works so just reconfigure that but this is as of uh, just lately so uh, let's go back here um, so now TCP NG is built into uh, um, Hyperion 4.3 which is great news because before you had to go and patch it or you had to go obtain Spinnaker, uh, Hercules Spinnaker support uh, sorry Spinhawk support which had it built in but now we have a version that has officially built it in um, this was originally written by Peter Coughlin out uh, in Ireland great job by Peter and now it's part of uh, um, Hyperion uh, this is important for networking in and out of uh, machines, guest operating systems running on top of Hercules. Uh, this may be an issue I open, maybe, not sure. Sounds very familiar. No, it's not by me, but uh, I've seen this error before. So, Linux uh, panel high CPU usage. Guest architecture switching, uh, this is very familiar. So apparently there were some issues with networking on ZVM. IPL command without a load parm. Um, that's also something I've been I've encountered before. Then work around with um, Microsoft VS 2019 compiler. So I'm going to say it here. I have never compiled Hercules on Windows. I wouldn't know how to do it. I don't even know where to get the compilers. I have no idea how to, com to compile software on Windows. I honestly have never done it. Um, I've done it, of course, a lot on, uh, on Linux and other operating systems, but never on Windows. So, um, not the source of help there, I'm sorry. Fixed crash of incomplete network device group defined. Never seen this one. Uh, object oriented Rex 5.0 load failure on all Apple Mac. Okay. Fixed crash in CKD DAS determination logic. I may have seen this one before. Um, uh, there's an assembler instruction that was broken. And now this one for me is a big one, VM fixed page assist. I've encountered this bug before and it really made some operating systems very unstable on top of uh, Hyperion. So I'm glad to see that they think they fix it. We'll see if it's really true. Even though I've been running a predecessor of 4.3 uh, release candidate for three, four months now and it's been very, very stable for me. So um, I think this is a good version. And stop uh, instruct stepping invalidation fetch bug. This uh, I don't know where this came from. A new Z15 secure boot. So the Z15 has a new secure IPL um, uh, process, especially for uh, things like ZVM. So apparently they had its support. And now this one is another big one. So um, starting from Z12 on. So the Z12 architecture and on, IBM added something called Transactional Execution Facility. I think TXF is one acronym for it. There's others that I've seen, which makes it possible to roll back uh, a set of instructions if something went wrong. Very complicated uh, facility that was added um, in Z12 by IBM. Not really quite sure why they did that, uh, what, the, what the main motivation for this very complex facility is in on the processor but apparently now they have added on top of uh, Hyperion which makes it possible to run certain operating systems on top of uh, Hyperion um, if people um, want to do that and then many other internal fixes and improvements I think one more fix which I don't see mentioned here is that um, Hyperion for two, the previous version, um, on a single CPU system with only one core uh, would behave in a very, very bad way and often then crash. So I think um, actually Jurgen fixed that for uh, for this release of 4.3. So um, it's an important release. I advise everybody who's running stuff on the previous version, which was 4.2.1, uh, to go and uh, run everything only on this version especially if you do any uh, bitnet or hnet uh, work and especially 
if you have had uh, any operating systems being unstable. So now that we've seen what's great, so what, what the best and greatest is in this new version, let's go and um, and obtain it and then compile it. So we're going to get the repo um, address here, copy. Okay, so we have here, I'm connected to a Linux machine, nothing special, it's an Optiflex, very old machine, but it has a fast um, CPU info, let's see, I'm not in, I don't even, it has a fast CPU, I mean, an i7-4790, 3.6 gigahertz, and I like these machines, by the way, because you can buy them very cheap, um, eBay, um, Dell Optiflex 9020, uh, you, uh, this one's, it's uh, it's a tower, you can get it fully spec'd with like 32 gigabytes, a one terabyte disk, etc. for under $200 on eBay, like this one. Well, don't get the i5, get the i7. And, the, and you can very easily add cards and stuff on top of them, they're very easy to uh, extend and add uh, hardware and they're very fast, so that's all you really need if you do Linux. Anyway, so I have this machine with, um, I don't know how many cores, I don't remember, honestly. Ah, eight cores, okay. And now let's go and uh, clone, git clone, uh, oops, I need to go get, uh, where is it? clone copy and now we okay so git sorry git clone and then the repository we'll go and obtain the repository if you already have Hyperion then just update the repository all right so now we'll have here Hyperion change it. there's many ways you can build this uh, the way I do it is actually not the recommended way the, the recommended way is to use C tags, so you go and obtain all the outside packages. But if you do it the way I do it, it will actually work just fine, and it's uh, easier to understand for people who are not very familiar with compiling Hyperion. So once we obtained Hyperion, we go in there. We have this old directory structure. You go into a directory a subdirectory called utils or UTIL, and here you have a program called build level check. So um, this will check if you have all the software that's needed to compile uh, to compile uh, Hyperion. So you can see it tells me to install CMake. So uh, CMake. Okay. So you can see this is the first time I'm actually compiling this. I I, I don't know if it's going to bomb out or make any problems. We'll find out. And the good thing is I make this video so I can make those mistakes and errors so you don't have to. Uh, there's one more thing that build level check never tells you, which is you need to do, obtain two more packages. One is G++, so I probably already have it. Install G++. Yeah, I already have it. And then there is uh, the libraries for compressed disks which you can find if you search for Ivan Warren, uh, Zilib, Hyperion. If you search for this uh, search words, Ivan Warren, Zilib, Hyperion, you will get onto this um, uh, mailing list email and it tells you, Peter Jansen actually answers here and says, this is the libraries you need. So we go and install those libraries. Let's, let's make the window a little bit smaller. There you go. All right. So we do sudo apt install this. And then also we have zilip and uh, bzip li library. So you can, some compress them with zilip, other compressors with bzip library. So let's install both. Although I may already have them both. Yes, actually it tells me is already the newest version. Very good. So if you run now the check again, we should have everything. Just remember to also install G++, very important. 
Okay, so now we go back, and now the next step will be to do auto gen. Wow, this is this is aggravating. They put videos everywhere now. Um, we run auto gen dot shell. Okay, so this went fine, and now we need to run configure. So just type configure. We'll check whatever the capabilities of the compiler and the libraries are. Let's see. As I mentioned, I have a fast computer here. You may have somewhat slower or maybe faster computer. This will also uh, compile fine on AMD if you have a Ryzen-based machine. I have a Ryzen machine in the office, which is much, much faster even than this computer. Okay, so the configure went fine. If you have any errors here, you can you will not be able to compile. But if this went fine after, so first autogen, then configure, and now the next step will be to do a make. Some people like to do minus J6 or 8, depending on how many CPUs or cores you have. I have found that sometimes make minus J with Hyperion can produce uh, some weird results. So I just do a normal make and we wait for this to compile it should be fast okay so you can see here uh, we have 64-bit DASD capability which was introduced with 4.2 or 4.1 maybe I don't remember very important because and now you can have uh, DASDs which are larger than uh, than four gigabytes. Oh, sorry, than two gigabytes. And okay, so it's doing its job. There's a bunch of warnings, but I don't see anything serious here. And I'm using the GCC compiler. Some people uh, prefer to use the C Lang compiler, uh, but both uh, should work. ECP SVM is important if you run VM370. This is a patch by Bob which will actually accelerate uh, VM uh, running on top of uh, Hercules, especially if you have a second level okay, um, VM machine. Diagnose, instruction, all important things. Floating point. If you think about the complexity of Hyperion, I don't know how many lines it is. We'll, f we'll find out in a second how many lines we have in uh, Hyperion. It's one of the most complex open source projects that I know of um, on uh, in the open source world. It's, it's, it's huge, it's very, very complex. And one thing that I like about the 4.3 release is that uh, what I've seen is that um, there's been much better cooperation on development of Hyperion of late uh, in the last year or so than there was maybe in the last six, seven years of Hercules history. Uh, so in the last year, Jürgen and a lot of other people and Ivan and Fish and Peter Jansen, Bob Pullmutter, they all focused on, on, uh, on all their work on the same uh, repository, this SDL repository I just showed and uh, the speed of uh, progress has been amazing so this is the repository you want and so as i said i like that a lot of people have now uh, converged on this version of uh, hercules and um, so we have 27 38 contributors and as i said hugely complex piece of software I don't know how many lines, many, many dozens of thousands of lines of code in C. And I always get some people saying, well, if you wrote it in assembler, it could be faster. Hercules is not meant for speed. I mean, you don't run Hercules if you want, if you want speed, because if you run VM370 and MVS 3.8, so those operating systems are so lightweight, they will run blazing fast on, you know, on any modern machine. So. Um, what is important for Hercules, and I think they made the right choices, is to be portable. So you can run on the Raspberry, you can run on Windows, you can run on Linux. And so running it in C and uh, uh, making, making it as portable as possible was absolutely the right decision. Okay, so we finished compiling, no problems at all. Now we will just do make install. And, oops, there was, oh, I need to do sudo, of course. 
make her install and this will install now Hercules as my standard Hercules on my machine okay so that's done Hercules and let's see what comes out okay this seems to work and it tells me that this is um, Hercules version 4.3.0 um, build date just now and I'm using GCC 9.3.0 which is the one that's delivered as part of Ubuntu 20.04 and it says that we have as you can see here uh, bzip2 support and zlib support so that's perfect so this is the version that we wanted now let's see help panopt um, okay so panopt light no panopt message color light Okay, so apparently we can change the color of the messages. So you can see here, certain messages now will be a red. Warnings, errors. Okay. So this is good for seeing the, the problems while stuff is executing on it. Okay, this is nice. I have no idea about the speed of this, um, and um, but uh, I haven't tried it yet. But this, you know, obtaining and compiling was very fast, and we got it to work very quickly. So this is the latest and greatest version of Hyperion of Hercules. It has all the capabilities that we needed, and as I mentioned, for me especially, the the things that stand out are TCP and GE compatibility, uh, fixing some of the errors that I found, and um, this one here, VM Fix Page Assist, and some of the others. So um, now let's see why this is important. So one thing that I'm doing here, so uh, we, could, we could just say quit. What I want to show you is, well, why is this hanging? Okay, the following. So I'm connected here to MBS 3.8, as you can see here, update 8. And what happened is that, as I mentioned before, um, this amazing developer, Bob Polmenter, if you go to GitHub slash Moshix, you will see that with the permission of Bob Polmenter, I have a repository called NGE um, where is it? I have so many repositories I can't find it that's repositories uh, NGE 38 okay here it is so you go to github.com slash moshik slash ng38 mbs and you see here that we have Bob Polmunter this is how you write his name is an amazing developer I, I, I'm in contact with him almost on a daily basis and he wrote in this amazing subsystem for mbs 3.8 called ng38 38 of course for mbs 3.8 which implements network job entry for MBS 3, our beloved 3.8. And why is this a big deal? Because um, we now have a full capability to send and receive files uh, on the HNet or any BitNet network. We can also send messages. So if I say, for instance, uh, NGE 38 message, um, for instance, um, we could say, uh, this node here relay system now we will actually go over the network connect to the other mainframe and send this message for execution on that 
other um, to send this message to this user at this node. And in this case, uh, it should come back with um, if everything is working fine. As I mentioned before, I've recently been reconfiguring my network. Let's see, NGE38 command relay D uh, CQN. So, yep, so right now it's not working. Let me see why. Let's go find out what's wrong. Let's go to the amazing interactive monitor of Greg Price. Let's go to the uh, console and let's see if the network is up. Uh, so you can see here NG38 is a started task. What NG38 does is it uses um, the TCP NGE protocol that we have here to use a modem device, which ex really existed in the, you know, 35 years ago, but now we emulate it over TCP IP. And so um, the TCP NGE driver on top of Hyperion makes it possible that a modem actually uses the internet to call other modems. And, um, and that's why it's kind of a big deal. So let's stop NG38 and let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see here link 38 uh, relay D is now set to do deactivate. Line 90 is disconnected. So that's a, that's a, a, a device address and there's a modem there, 2703 modem and NG38 uses that to call the other computer which I configured to be host relay D which is a uh, FUN Fujinet um, FUN um, what is it called again <laughs> um, FUNET NGE this um, uh, Unix NGE Yes, so it's this implementation which I'm running on Linux. So that's the other node, that's the other side of this mainframe. So let's start it again, start NGE. And now it's gonna take the modem, dial up and call the other machine. As you can see here, NG38 is non-swappable. So it's, it cannot be swapped. Configure member, okay. And sign on. So now sign on is complete it can now, um, it's not connected to the other mainframe. And the other mainframe in this case is just a Linux machine running the FUNET NGE protocol. Um, and it's acting as relay D. So now let's see what we can do with this. And I'll get to why this is all important, but uh, NG38, um, relay D. So we should get Okay, so now it's answered, it says relay D, no one is logged on. Now let's say NGE38 and um, so now I want to go one node beyond relay D, which I know is connected to, to this machine, and I should get some kind of response. Yes. So I got a response back now. So you can see now it went uh, to the next machine and it issue a command. And what I'm running there is actually a chat server, which I wrote uh, the last two weeks uh, together with uh, uh, Neil Ferguson, with help from Neil Ferguson and with help from uh, Peter Jacobs in Munich in Germany. We wrote a new implementation of the NGE chat server in Rex running on, uh, on this VM. And so uh, it's, we can now send messages and uh, it will answer us. So we can also do, for instance, M. So again, this is the node, this means message. This is the node. And now the user, user is relay. And now we can say stats, send me some statistics. And so it answers here. Uh, it's a machine um, running in Stockholm. It's an IBM Z114. Let's see, okay, so I got back here now. We've had, uh, right now there's nobody logged on. Highest number of users is one because it's a test environment. 77 messages, it's been up since 
uh, Friday, 20th of November. So all this works fine. Now, what happens when I send from another machine, I send a file to this MBS 3.8. So NG38 actually uh, receives the file over a modem and stores it in a vSAN data set. Now, um, Peter Jacobs and Mike Grossman went and wrote this amazing thing, which is a browser for the spool of files that just came in. So we can press F1 and see it. we have commands, view file content, view file details, receive file, purge file, send a reply to the sender of a file. So um, what they did is they use their own Brex version, which they ported to MBS 3.8, which is amazing. It's called Brex, for um, which they ported from, from an existing Rex port called Brex. They ported to the mainframe. And there they implemented the panels. Everything you, you see here is actually written in this Rex for MBS 3.8. I'm not going to get into that in a second again. But let's see what we can do. So we can say B, and now we can see individual files. So browse, and I can see what's in that file. Now, this file that was sent to me is actually a transmit package, an XMIT package. So you can actually open transmit packages and receive them properly into the DASTIs of MBS 3.8. So here I have some more messages and i have probably some yeah so i received a bunch of uh of uh, uh transmit packages here and peter jacobs and mike rossman went and made this all easily uh, usable with this panel that they wrote so not only they wrote the application now to browse the spool of files that we received and want to send but they also wrote the panel system behind it as well um, so let's go and see, because I am actually using this now to write a configuration file to configure ng38. So if you follow what I'm doing here, so let's go and see. So Peter Jackson wrote this amazing program called FMT list format list. It's a way it's written in Rex itself, and it's a way um, to create panels easily, interactive panels easily on top of uh, of uh, Rex for MBS 3.8. And I think this is actually going to spur a lot of innovation and activity by people who want to write their own applications for MBS 3.8 to do all kinds of stuff. And remember, we also have TCP IP now for MBS 3.8. We can actually run service, uh, TCP server, IP service inside NG38, such as Telnet servers or any kind of servers. And so um, now we can also write the panels to monitor all that stuff and to and to configure stuff. So the possibilities are endless. And I think that the best times uh, are ahead of us when it comes to MVS 3.8 and the things we can do with it. One more reason which I, I think that our the best time for mainframes is still coming is that I believe that certain things are happening within IBM which are very, very good for the community. And I don't want to say too much here, but I think we're going to have an amazing 2021. So let's see uh, what this thing does. First of all, let's execute it. So I execute this panel by saying of course, it's a TSO command, so TSO and then Rex, and then the name of this member. And then we'll look into, so this is the source code that you see here, and now I'm going to execute it. When I execute it, what you see here is um, that I have kind of an editor panel where I can change things. So I can, for instance, uh, uh, I don't remember, I have purge, so I can purge a line. And then line it's purged as you can see it's gone where i can edit it and then i put it in this many stars asterisks so and then once it's done then i could write submit and will actually go and reconfigure submit um, submit this a job so that we can reconfigure ng38 let's say that i want to add a node and i would just say you know i would add this one here edit and I will say route uh, type final because this needs to be the last card. But then we would say here, um, I don't know, um, relay D. Oh, I have to actually have to go 
change it here. Let's say route play ID. Hmm. Fix with a D. Something like this. And obviously we would have to put some spaces in there. Yeah. So as you can see, it's I'm still working on it, but you can create all these things very all this is created by the source code. So let's go look how this all works. So um so this is a utility to configure NJ38 um, by Bob Palmunter. First, uh, we open a file here, um, and then we read all the lines of this file into a, a into a buffer, a stem variable, and, and then we close the file. And then uh, we call FMT list and we say and so each one of these things has a meaning so select an item so this would be um, the menu that that you see here before so if I do F12 so this is the part that creates this part here okay and then we have uh, the menu uh, this part here creates this part of the panel this here okay this is created by this code so um, we have offer input and and then we have um, we create um, the rest of the panel so that um, if somebody let's say wants to purge so if somebody presses P, so here you have the problem. So E means uh, you want to uh, change a line. P means you want to purge a line. And so um, uh, that's how you would then code it. So let's say you want to add a option uh, to, I don't know, to turn into uppercase, then you would do something. Let's say it would be U will be the, the um, the command, the line command, then you call it U. And then we would take that line and we would say uppercase of that line. And return, uh, we would then return 4, which means that we have we've modified the line. Return 4. And this way, I'm still used to the X edit. Uh, from from VM. Anyway, so uh, this is how you can add line commands now to our panel. So let's go check again. We only have E and P, but we could easily add other commands by using this panel structure. Now, um, and so when we choose um, E, what happens is that we call this function, and here we actually uh, get to change the line that we were that we were um, wanted to edit, and that's why the argument is going to be the line number that we want to change. And then, uh, and then when then it waits for an enter. Once a user player presses enter, then we return back to the to uh, to the panel before. And sorry, so I was well, misspoke before. So the the primary menu, which is this one. This one primary menu is handled here. So so once somebody says save, type save, what happens is that the file is now saved back into the configuration directory for ng, which is ng38 samplet. Write, it says here write. And uh, if there is a problem. If you cannot open for writing, it means it's in use by some other TSO user. Since this is a normal member in a PDS, only one user can access it for writing at the same time, or even for reading, by the way. So then uh, it says it cannot be opened because somebody else is, has it open. And then otherwise, if it succeeds in opening, then it writes the buffer that we recently changed into, uh, into this configuration file here. 
and then if the user types submit then what we do is uh, we submit job 031 to reconfigure uh, ng38 and so we can go check out what job 31 is let's go over there ng38 sample so i created this ng this uh, jcl here which takes the the member that we just saved with the changes and submits it uh, because it needs to be assembled so you can see here it's an assembler macro that needs to be assembled and then uh, replaces uh, the nj configuration file um, in uh, uh, in this place here in the in the off label authent authenticated lib so once it replaces there then ng38 is aware of the new configuration changes and so you can add nodes subtract nodes etc so this is how the configuration file needs to look like and so it's tedious to have to come here you know you could do this by hand and we're out we could do this like this right um and we could add one more right we can do all that by hand and then we have to save it then get out and then run this job yes this all works however by just invoking our panel that i've been writing now uh, we have a simple to use uh, application to to do it uh, interactively so all this is possible because of Two things first peter jacobs and mike rossman ported the rex and amazing rex to mvs 3.8 and second because they wrote a panel utility so that very easily you can very easily create applications in rex to create panels and handle all kinds of stuff so you can see here very simple so in 60 lines with lots of empty lines here we have a whole um, we have a whole way to create a configuration um, utility to configure our ng38 here so um, these are the two things that i believe are going to be huge for mvs 3.8 um, update 9 by jürgen winkelmann once it comes out it will come out with this rex version that we have here number one number two it will also come out with um, the ng38 um, bitnet uh, uh, drivers by bob polmonter and the combination of nge and um, and Rex are just amazing. One of the things that I'm also doing, by the way, which should be ready in the next 10 days or so, is have a chat server in Rex written for MVS 3.8 so that uh, people can also run their own chat server. So everybody's now be going to be able to run their own chat server on their own mainframe. And that's exactly how it was in BitNet days. In BitNet days, there was a special user on each mainframe called Relay and that relay was a chat server so people could connect to any machine anywhere in the network and just connect to the chat server on this mainframe or on that mainframe and some chat server and some mainframes had a lot of people some had less some didn't have one at all but um, all the possibilities of rex that we have with mvs 3.8 and ng38 now we have mainframes are able to unite and so uh, now all these mainframes that all these thousands of hobbyists enthusiasts have all over the world they can they will be able to connect with each other and exchange information and now finally we have a, something that's alive that we can use daily for for fun for learning studying and for maybe even for work so that's why the release of uh, of uh, her of of Hyperion 4.3 is kind of a big deal because it, it includes the drivers for um, TCP NGE which enables all of that stuff so that's it so uh, what you saw here in this video is how to obtain and properly compile the new release 4.3 of, of um, Hercules of Hyperion and then you saw some of the things that we are able to do with the new uh, possibilities that will be given to us by MVS 3.8 TK4 Update 9 with Rex and NG38 and many other improvements. 
So I'm really excited about the things that are going to be possible. I'm busy with a whole bunch of uh, projects, and I'm working on a on a on a on a Go uh, VTAM replacement and uh, several other things, interesting things which I will be reporting. But as I said, it's uh, it's the end of the year, and it's mainframe time for a lot of people. When it's cold or, sn or snowing or rainy outside, people like to sit inside and do stuff on the mainframes. If you have any questions how to get Hyperion uh, to properly compile on your machine, then please let me know. By the way, before we get there, uh, on on the Raspberry, the process is slightly different. And maybe I should make a video about it, but uh, it involves uh, using C tags because you have to obtain the external packages such as Telnet and uh, floating point packages. So maybe I'll make a video about that because I think it's it's a little bit different on the Raspberry than it is on any normal Linux. But on any Linux machine, uh, Intel-based, the process that I showed before, which is autogen, remember, autogen, uh, first this, then configure, and then make, and then sudo make install. That's all it really takes. In four simple steps, you have the latest and greatest version of Hyperion 4.3 running on your machine in maybe no, no more than two or three minutes or four minutes. So if you have any questions, please post them uh, in, the in, in the comments below this video. I very much would appreciate uh, any thumbs up you can give this video. Let's see how many people like what we've done here in this, covered in this video. And I uh, wish you uh, uh, happy holidays. Thank you, goodbye.